Just FYI, I am recording. Yes. On I like my the Buffy end. poster. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, this is awesome. I'm so glad that you um, took the time to do this today. Um, so my friend Lauren and I, she's my co-producer here, we just watched the mid-season finale. Uh -oh. I'm like flipped out. <laughs> I don't want to do too, too many spoilers because I do want to post um, the interview today, but I'm just like, I can't wait for the rest of the season. I'm so excited. Can you tell me how, you said you had 14 days left of filming. Where are you, like, give me a timestamp in regards to between now towards finishing the rest of the season. There's eight shooting days left, oh, wow. 14 days uh, together until season four uh, ends. So it's, and it's starting to uh, hit. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, um, we're, we're all on set and, and then we finish a scene and then we're like, oh, that's the last time we're going to be on that set for the, uh -huh. hopefully just for the year, for the season. But, you know, you never know. So after everything we've been through already, you know, we're also, we try and prepare ourselves for anything. This could be like, so yeah, we're like wrapping sets and characters are getting wrapped. Um, so uh, yeah, it's like, um, it's, it's a happiness and it's a sadness at the same time. But um, I'm very excited for everybody to see what we're doing. Are you dying to get that mustache off? <laughs> no, um, you know, I, 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 it's, it's just because it's Doc, uh, and I just love being a part of this show so much. Uh, but, you know, there was some news that was released yesterday that I'm jumping onto another show after this. Yeah, um, it's the Realtor. Realtor. I'm really excited yeah. for that. Another sci-fi show. Yeah, me too. I love sci-fi. So uh, it's like, it's just another dream come true. And plus I'm reunited with Sarah Levy from Schitt's Creek. So it's going to be incredible. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, so the mustache won't last long. Uh, okay. <laughs> normally, uh, normally every season when we wrap, I shave like immediately. I can't get, I can't wait to get rid of it. But uh, in December, um, I, I was lucky. I have a son now yeah As of december so congratulations uh, thanks but i haven't seen him again since we came back out here to film um so i'm gonna see him so i'm keeping the mustache until oh. i see him because i want to shave in front of him so he you know because now he recognizes me with the mustache i don't i'm too scared to so like uh, <laughs> i don't want to show up and i'm already like a new stranger and i haven't seen him in a while and so um that's so cute. Well, I spoke with Melanie and Kat, you know, over the last month or so about the new season. And when I spoke with them, I asked them what they did in regards to help them getting in character more. Of course, Kat said dyeing her head red to get into Nicole. And, and why, um, Melanie said what interesting about to get into Winona, putting on the belt. She said that was like a major thing for her. So for you, obviously, you have the accent, you have the hat, a big thing for you is the mustache. So is that like the one thing for you in order to get back into Doc is growing the mustache? Or is there another costume piece or something that you have on set as well that helps you get back into character? Yeah, you know, I mean, the mustache is such a huge part of it, but to be honest, it's the hat. I love the hat. It's, it's real hard to play a cowboy without a hat. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, and I try not to take that hat off uh, too often either, unless it's like a moment of, uh, of uh, real sincerity from Doc. You know, I try to save it for those Doc Winona moments where he really wants to, you know, be a gentleman and try yeah. and, uh, yeah. But uh, it's something about putting that hat on and it's like, it's almost too tight too. Um, but it's just like, I don't know, I, I put it on and then boom, then I could be Doc Holliday. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm a huge Winona and Doc Shipper, and I have several questions about that that we'll get into. But I loved watching the inside the episode regarding Melanie's directorial episode, episode three. And I love what you guys said about each other. And especially she said that you were kind of the catalyst that made her know, you know, directing was a possibility for her. So what was that like to just like hear all of those kind comments about from Melanie about you in regards to her directorial debut? Yeah, look, I mean, I'm, we're just, we're so fortunate to have Melanie Scofano. Uh, like I said, I, I can't say enough about her as an actor. Uh, as another actor, she's one of the best I've ever worked with. And it's just, that's just a fact. That's not smoke or anything. That's just a fact. I've worked with a lot of people and I know what they give and, and they get you. Uh, and you get so much from Melanie um, that she can take you places. So uh, honestly, just so lucky to work with her and then 
to see her direct, she brought that same type of energy to directing and her notes were just so good. You're just, cause she's such a good actor. But um, yeah, and then to hear her say nice things is, is great because I think uh, we probably bust each other's balls more than anything because we're such good friends. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, maybe, so then we forget when someone says something nice, we're always like, oh my gosh, you know, it means so much more. Um, oh my gosh yeah i'm i'm a huge melly scofano fan i think yeah. she's incredible same i have her i'm wearing her right now well, i'm wearing a my winona oh I'm yeah very like nice tarot card shirts yeah uh, <laughs> they're so pretty um so obviously if winona was back was brought back for another season which i'm hoping you know it is of course would you want to write an episode we have your comic book here like we love it with especially with what you wrote in the back here and i know melanie wrote a little bit as well so i'm just curious yeah. for you like would you write an episode of winona or get into kind of the back-end production side at all would you be interested um, in something like that i love that you didn't ask me if i'd want to direct because you're you you already knew that the answer was no and you'd be right i did it <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah no look i i, I um <laughs> I love the writing aspect. Getting to write the comic books with Bo Smith is one of my favorite things. I mean, it's just, uh, it's an honor. I've learned so much from that man. Uh, and, to, and to come into that world. And then the cool thing about the comic books is that, you know, I get to write the Winona world from the television and it's kind of mixed into the comic books. So it's super, yeah. super cool. Um, I would love to write an episode, um, but at the same time, I just love that team so much and what they bring. I always said to Emily, I would just love to be able to come sit in the writer's room. I actually don't even want, no, I don't need the pressure of trying to keep up with how good they are. They're too good. But I would just love to go and learn and watch, you know, because that's what I, with the cool thing with Bo is how much I learned. I just learned so much. Um, and I would just be a sponge in that room listening to them. And you know, she's, it's Emily. She always plays it off like, oh, you'd be bored. It's all donuts and stupid jokes and da da da. And I'm like, that's all the gold. I'm like, you know? sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah, that's what she doesn't understand. Like, I just want to hear them talk about, you know, character breakdowns or outlines. I, I, yeah, it would, it would be my dream just to sit in that writer's room, just to, just to be there. Yeah, I mean, I love how Emily and the crew and, you know, all of you guys are just like so passionate about the Erpers and the fandom because like I was telling Melanie and Kat, you know, I talk with a lot of actors and especially during this time via Zoom, you know, while we've been social distancing and while we've been quarantining and there's just no fandom like the Erper fandom. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before just as a journalist. And can you talk about the fandom and just how that resonates with you guys while you're on set? Like, are you constantly kind of thinking about the fandom and like what their reactions are going to be to certain, you know, one-liners or jokes? How does that resonate with you while you're on set working? Well, A, Lauren, I'm super happy you brought that up. Oh. Um, because, um, look, my favorite thing about this year and that, you know, the fight for Winona and coming back um, and then, you know, we got a lot of press this year, which was incredible. But the cool thing is kind of just like what you did is that everyone's also taking notice of the Erpers. And yeah. that's what makes me super happy. Because in my mind, that's where the attention needs to go. On this fandom and what they've done and the, the, the just the beautiful like world of, of that they've created, this place of like kindness and acceptance. And it's just like, you know, it makes everything better. It makes going through a pandemic better. Yeah. You know, it's like I, you could be sad and stuff, but then I'd see the Erpers and they were all, you know, they were live tweeting. I was on another show, Vagrant Queen, and they were yeah. tweeting on that mm -hmm. and just positivity and kindness and happiness. Because if you, if I open up the news, it's all the opposite. So, you know, it's just, it's such a, it's just the light all the time. It's this bright shining light. And it's them. If they created that, we created this show. You know, and I love our show and I think it's, you know, one of my favorite shows I've ever been on. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it doesn't compete to what the Erpers have created. And, I, and, and Yeah. I, I and, feel and like I, it's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like it will go on, you know, um, when, when the show finally ends, the season 10, 11, whenever it is, um, yeah. you know, the, the friendships and the, 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 like, you know, the marriages and the relationships and the, it, this is all because of that fandom. The people got together from all around the world. Uh, I've met people from all over the world. And to be honest, 
it's the same person I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. or it's that version of themselves. Like I always said, uh, being a part of this community just makes me want to be the best version of myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we can be good. You know? I mean, and, yeah. And I mean, and also just as a fan, like just watching Winona during this time, especially after a two year hiatus, like it's just provided like so much happiness for the fandom, honestly, because every episode is monumentally good. And when I was watching this mid season finale, it, even though you guys didn't know there was going to be a mid-season finale, you had to film, it was stopped filming halfway through because of COVID. Without giving anything away, it really truly acts as kind of a mid-season finale. The writing and the performances and everything is amazing. So good. Yeah. Like, I don't want to say it's, anything. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how it worked out like that. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Speaking of fandoms, um, is there like a particular show or movie that you truly fanned out about when you were younger or maybe even, you know, shows or something that you've been really into lately that you've been watching? I know you've been filming, but what's something that Tim really fans out about and geeks out about besides the Erper fans, obviously? <laughs> um, well, you know, if, for me, uh, when I was a kid, it was music. It was just Michael Jackson. I was like oh. obsessed with Michael Jackson. Yeah. I, like, I was just like a, just the craziest Michael Jackson fan. Gloves and outfits and moonwalks okay. and just anybody would watch, I would put on performances of Thriller. <laughs> but uh, the coolest and luckiest thing for me is I got into comic books when I was around eight, nine years old. And uh, look I, where you are. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like the first time I got to go to San Diego Comic Con, which was a dream for me to always go just as a fan, I got to go because I was on a show that was invited to be there, to be on a panel, oh, wow. signing comic books that I co wrote with drawings of a character that I play on a TV show based on a comic in San Diego. It was like, if you can imagine a person's dream, lifelong dream coming together in one thing, that's me. Like, mm -hmm. I can't ask the universe for too much more. I really can't. Um, you know, it's like, I, honestly, what else can I ask for? It's you just been, it's been such a dream. It's, it's, it's such a, yeah, so, so, so crazy. So crazy. So, um, so obviously the show has two of the greatest TV ships in history. I watch a lot of TV and these are Eat Way Hot and Wine Doc or Why Doc, whatever you want to call it. Is, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Winona and Doc shipper. What can we expect from that relationship for the rest of the season? I kind of spoke with Melanie about this and she's like, maybe Tim will give you a little bit more. Talk to him. Um, but I personally hope their relationship is endgame. Melanie told me she personally hopes their relationship is endgame. So I'm hope, what do you, do you hope their relationship is endgame as well? I know that's up to Emily and the creators, but what do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a sucker for a love story and, uh... I would love it if they could find love. But, um, you know, I always say it's not easy. I think Doc Holliday's kind of ready to settle down. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, you know, uh, the cool thing is where we're at in the season now, you kind of see his, his past has come up again and Wyatt and stuff. And, I, and you can kind of see the shift in Doc of wanting to let go of the past. Mm -hmm. And I think once he does that, if he's able to do that, he'll be ready for a life with Winona. But the thing you need to remember is it's all cool that Doc wants that, but he doesn't have the burden of being the hero. Winona Earp does. Mm -hmm. She just can't stop, you know what I mean? Being the hero to go and be in love. She doesn't have that luxury. It's unfortunate. <laughs> You're <making me> nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she's the hero. It's a hero's burden. It's, yeah. it's not, yeah. you know. Um, You're right. She's the one that's got to save the day at the end of the day all the time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Doc can just, he wants to say, hey, let's go, you know, raise a family and, 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 and be that. But she's like, cool, but I got to do all this other shit first, you know? Has other so, obligations, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Either way, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great story. And, uh, yes, I love yeah. it so much. Um, so when I interviewed Melanie, she said that she had not yet read the script for the last episode of the season. I interviewed her a couple weeks ago, not sure if she's read it yet. She did tell me that you told her that when you read episode 12, it made you cry. Of course, you know, I know you can't give away any spoilers, but can you tell us, you know, anything that fans could be looking forward to or were they happy or sad tears <laughs> <laughs> she, 
She's read it since. Oh, she has. Uh, okay, so yeah, we did I one read through. Uh, wow. The two of us. Uh, well, we did a read through with everybody via Zoom, but the two of us, we had some scenes together. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, uh, awesome. It, I think maybe some other people were crying during that read through too. Oh gosh. <laughs> What do you, um, okay, so obviously I'm, I'm a huge, you know, vampire story, you know, lover. I love the, when, you know, the, the scene when Doc becomes a vampire, I'm a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan. I know Emily is too. She's talked about it many times. What was that like for you when you, you know, read that this was going to be happening to Doc? And is there different things that you did as an actor in regards to, or something maybe you learned about Doc or learned about yourself as an actor once that change in him happened? Again, I know that was, you know, what, season three? Mm -hmm. A couple. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what, what's, you know, how did that kind of manifest your performance from that change on? And do you like playing a vampire? <laughs> um, you know, uh, oddly enough, that moment was, uh, someone spoiled it for me. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, and they're so good at never spoiling anything. Oh, my God. And I won't say who it is because I don't want to, I'll never throw anybody under the bus. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we always get together, well, pre COVID, before right. we start production for a big dinner, just directors and executive producers and producers and everybody. We get together and we have a big deal. And uh, I remember we were at a big table, lots of people, people are talking. And someone came over to me and was like, oh, are you excited that Doc's becoming a vampire? And I was like, what? <laughs> I, you know, I'd only read the pilot of season three up to that point. And Got I was it. like, what? And then I don't become a vampire until around... Um, halfway through. Yeah, halfway through, probably episode six. So I kept mm -hmm. getting scripts. Like, normally, I'm, I'm such a fan of our show. Like, I read... I'm the first one to read those scripts. That's, why That's what like, Melanie said. I need to know. I'm yeah. like, I'm dying... <laughs> Know what's happening but when i that season i'd get them and i just kept flipping through for like when's he did that person lie to me why did they <laughs> and then uh yeah but i kind of saw it going that way once i realized kate was a vampire and then da da da. And, but then yeah when it happened i kind of knew it was coming but uh yeah i didn't think too much about it but to be honest um i watched Chantal a lot and she's a great actress so and i loved uh, our my chemistry with kate uh, yes. Well, and you know it's good because Mel hated our chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> it was honestly, I, I actually, being a huge Winona and Doc fan, I did think that that relationship was really beautiful. Like when it was like, I mean, of course I love Winona and Doc, but like I yeah. thought the chemistry, like, and she's amazing in the world. Yeah, amazing. Well, don't forget, they were married. They, you know, it's, it's been a hundred, it's tragic though. That story is too. I mean, there's some, Doc's involved in some pretty tragic uh, love stories. Well, what she, I mean, she was very in love with him in order to like pursue him after what, a hundred years or something? Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but I watched her because she got to vamp out first to try and get some uh, ideas. And a uh, little insider information, the gold teeth thing, because yeah. they're gold, that was Melanie Scorfano's um, kind of uh, idea. That oh, was, it that was? was? Yeah, because she had already been, the director bug was in her. So even in season three, because season three she directed a scene, so she would spend a lot of time behind the scenes learning stuff and da 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 and she had seen this uh like a grill like a gold grill somewhere it's like yo we should make like a grill like with vampire teeth so well i like it yeah because it looks different from any from a lot of the other vampire shows i've seen and one of my questions on here actually um was were they was it comfortable or the thing is the girl comfortable yeah i mean we i have to get it like made to your mouth you do like yeah. this weird like hot wax uh thing of whatever i don't know <laughs> um, but the thing that nobody thought about was this giant mustache. Yeah, it's like hard to see. Exactly. Chantel, she's beautiful. Yeah. And she definitely doesn't have a mustache. <laughs> so, you know, it's like nobody thought about that. But then they've got Doc, the guy with the world's biggest mustache, trying to show teeth. So, like, I just remember constantly trying to, like, put your head back more, mouth more open. So it was, like, hard to try and be natural because I'm just trying to sell these teeth. That yeah. you can't see anyway, you know. Oh uh, my gosh! Yeah, but it was odd, odd enough that when I did it, I like I don't know. There was a growl that came with me when I did it as a character. I I don't know why he just became like more of like an animal. 
I did. Uh, there, there, and there was that episode. It was like in either episode four or five of this season where like Winona gets bit and he like growls or something, or like she gets stabbed or something. He like growls, and I was yeah. like, ooh, and it's yeah. the not growl. <laughs> yeah, well, that and that stayed in me of like, and that was part of that. It was just he's such an animal, and and I love that sense because it's like, um, you know. Yeah, like it's like think of an animal. Like you can have a bear, and most of the time they're cute and cuddly, but sometimes the bear is just gonna be a bear, and you can't really hold the bear accountable for being a bear, you know. So that's how I always thought of Doc. Is like he's this wild animal that he's trying to deal with this thing, but once in a while the guy's gonna just he's gonna need blood. Yeah. Um, he's gonna act out, you know. So yeah. It was it was cool. Um, uh, yeah, a couple more questions for you. I know you have to go soon. Um, I got obviously tons of fan questions on Twitter. One of them at Cleakers on Twitter was wondering, um, you know, of course you traditionally filmed Winona Earp in the winter months, COVID happened. Now you're in more of the spring, you know, like summer months, it's obviously warmer weather. Is it, is it weird being doing on um, being on set in warmer weather right now? Uh, no, like it's, uh, I mean, look, it's weird because it's, it's COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's the homestead looks incredible. Like I, that was when it really hit, like we got to the homestead and it was just green. Yeah. Just green everywhere. And you're like, wow. And it's just, you know, like they had, you know, the sign is like the mailbox almost covered in weeds and grass. And you're just like, wow, it's, it's incredible. Alberta's beautiful. Okay. It's just, a, it's a beautiful part of the country. And, um, yeah, for me though, I'm not enjoying too much of the summer. If I'm being honest, I kind of quarantine. Um, there is kind of relaxed rules. There is certain things we're allowed to do. I still don't do them. I come yeah. home. Um, not per se that I'm worried about getting COVID, yeah. but this is season four of One Owner Herb that we've been waiting for too long. I have too big a responsibility to too many people, including our crew, to just risk it. So I haven't been having the best summer because yeah. I, I just, you know, I went on a couple, you know, Two, two hikes in the three months I've been here out in the woods, you know, I went one time I brought a fishing rod, another time I went on a hike with Varun, and that's about it. Uh, that's kind of the same vibe I got from Kat and Mel when I spoke with them as well. They're just kind of like, we're, they said that, you know, you guys are kind of hanging out when you're done filming as a group sometimes, but most of the time you're just kind of going back and chilling, but because I'm sure everything has been kind of weird during COVID. When you first came back, did you, did you kind of quarantine for two weeks when you got to Alberta and then you guys started filming and then did your Corona testing and everything like that in order to start? Is that yeah, how it works? That's correct. Yeah, wow. we did the testing first almost immediately, uh, then quarantined again. Um, same thing. Like I didn't bring my family out, and uh, like I've done it alone just because it's it's just low risk is no no risk, you know. Yeah, there's certain things that we can do, but there's still I'm just I'm not going to be responsible for for stopping season four. That's for sure. I it's know. A, I I, to, I I feel like you're the biggest wine owner or fam I, I've ever talked to. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just like um, yeah. Well, another fan question, I absolutely love this one, and I know we kind of touched on this earlier. Um, at Robot Faith was wondering, when you became a father, did that change any way in how you approached Doc's character, or how you portrayed Doc's character? I mean, because Doc is obviously, you know, a dad to little Alice, wherever she is out in the world. But, I mean, like, when you became a father, did you kind of approach the character in a different way? I mean, it's interesting to see... Um if I get to work with um, Alice again, <laughs> uh, because <laughs> you, nothing, I mean, yeah, everything changes. Yeah. It does, because, you know, I was still affected and, and you act as, as, as you would be as a, as, a, as, a, as a father you think you would be, but it's only in that moment came that um, I didn't think I was capable of loving something as much as I love my son. It's, a, it's just, it's, I can't explain it. My heart is just, it's his. He can, you know, it's like yeah. my life's just not mine anymore. Anyway, it's all him. It's, it's, it's all I think he's just, it's, it's, it's incredible how much your heart is just full with love for, for someone. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so interesting. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Last question for you. So what can you tell us about the Surreal Tour? What can you tell us about that show? And also, have you done any type of Zoom reading? Have you already kind of like Zoomed reunited with Sarah Levy or anything like that? Uh, we have talked uh, yeah. a lot about it. Um, I think, look, it's going to be a really fun project from what I heard. 
um, you know, Danishka, I just worked with her. She was the director on Vagrant Queens. She's one of the showrunners. Uh, I've done lots of Zooms with her and the other showrunner, George. Um, Josh from Sci-Fi is the exec, so everybody should know him from Twitter. Uh, he's just a great, great, great human to have in your corner. Yeah. So, you know, and it's the Blue Ice guys. I've worked with them a couple of times. Kat and I did Lake Placid with them. Um, so it's just a great ensemble piece. Uh, the cool thing is, is that each episode is a different house because what yeah, we're, we're selling like is we're really selling haunted houses, right? Yeah. yeah so, so each episode is going to be, you know, sometimes the haunted house will deal with really, really mean, nasty ghosts and that's not going to be a very fun episode. And, you know, sometimes you could get the funner ghosts, maybe, <laughs> I don't know if that's the word, but you know what I mean? So it's fun to see where we go and how... Uh, I've gotten up to seven scripts already and oh, each wow. one, I'm just like, wow. And Sarah and I have already like spoken a couple of times and just like excited different scenes we were excited about. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Awesome. Well, honestly, Tim, thank you so much for your time. Like, you know, I'm a huge Winona fan. I absolutely adore Schitt's Creek. I wanted you to like come back for the finale so bad. <laughs> yeah, well, know you know, you uh, Winona Earp, man. <laughs> I know, I know you couldn't have. Um, before I let you go, I wanted to introduce you to my BFF co-producer, Lauren. She's wearing her her little, one of her fan shirts hi. here. Oh, hey, hi. <laughs> also <are> named Lauren. <laughs> Where Lauren, she, Lauren, got it. Yeah, Lauren, yeah, she's the one that got me into Winona, you know, like a while back, and now we're both obsessed with it. We text about it all the time, so we appreciate your time today, um, and I can't wait for the fans to see the mid-season finale, and I can't wait to see how it ends. I'm, so, yeah. I'm nervous about what you say, but I'm also excited. <laughs> uh, listen, I'll leave you with this. Okay. From, from, we almost lost this show. We almost lost something we love so much. And every single one of us is aware of that. Emily Andrus is 100% aware of this. This is the season that the Erpers deserve. Yeah. And the Erpers deserve the world. They do. I, I honestly was just opening up Twitter after episode two with all of the way hot, gorgeous, beautiful scene and waiting for them to just completely faint and pass out over that, which they all did. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. Well, Tim, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And good luck for the rest of your filming. Well, thank you. Great questions. Thank you so much. I'm glad you liked them. Thank you so yeah. much, Tim. Pleasure. I we love you as an actor so much. So this was like a, a huge honor, honestly. Oh, awesome. You guys, <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you okay, guys Thank so you much. so much. Thanks for okay, Thanks, Bye. Bye. Be safe. I will. <laughs>